Hello everybody, Ryan the Almighty here. Welcome to episode 13 of my Let's Play of Sky Factory. Yes, episode 13. Let's uh, hope we don't have bad luck. Uh, in between the last episodes, I basically fixed this guy up. Uh, what I realized I was doing was that from each of these actual spawners, they can spawn eight blocks away. So one, two, three, four... Eight, nine. So I basically just extended nine blocks in each direction, filled with cobblestone from each spawner. So we shouldn't have any more issues with blazers spawning where they shouldn't be. Uh, the issue kind of still remains where they don't really spawn unless I'm standing over here. But that's not a big deal, you know. If I ever need drops, I can just stand here for an idle for however long I want. But yeah. Uh, I also made an upgrade to the lovely force furnaces. They now are exporting lava into the bottom, which is the fuel slot. And basically that's what's powering them. And yeah, when this one's empty, for example, I can show you what happens once it eventually gets there. But uh, yeah, we have a ton of resources coming in from our lovely... Magical Crops Farm. I planted some Certus Quartz seeds down, which I really should have done quite a while ago because I need to get an Emmy uh, Molecular Assembler Chamber set up soon. So when this is empty... Now, unfortunately, I can't get it to take out the uh, empty buckets because you can only put one bus per side. So, yeah, I tried to experiment with... Uh, what's it called, Ender IO conduits, but they didn't seem to work, so this is as good as I can do for now, I just take that out, chuck it there, the vacuum hopper picks it up, puts it into the system, and then it comes over here, an autonomous activator, which imports empty buckets, as long as there is a redstone signal, uh, which it basically outputs if there's 16, well, if there's more than 16 buckets. So the system always keeps 16 buckets in. As soon as there's another bucket in the system from over there, it'll fill it up with lava. So yeah, that's pretty good. I've got that automated. You know, it just sucks I can't get this to basically automatically output the empty buckets, which is a bit of a pain, but oh well. So in the comments of one of my previous videos, someone asked basically, how do the force furnaces work? Uh, so I'm going to go through quickly how to do that. Uh, it's already got something in it, so I can take that. So I'm going to explain a little bit about how they work. Alright, so you've basically got your, your normal force furnaces, which come in many different colours. The standard one is white. You can simply dye it with dye if you want to, for whatever reason. You know, pretty simple to make. Then all you need to do is as you can see up here there is a slot for something and basically how these guys work is they function like a normal furnace but you can put cores in them which do different things like this one here is a core of grinding which pretty much works like a macerator this core of speed 5 which means it's really fast as I'm sure you've seen it works so fast and this one here is a frozen core. This freezes things, like for example, I believe it freezes never quartz into quartz. And there's a few other things it does. I don't think I can actually see the recipes for it, no. But there's a bunch of stuff that you may use freezing for. So how you actually make these lovely things is you need to get a book, an enchanted book. So if you just have a book, simply put it in here Put something low level on it so you don't waste your levels. Chuck it into... I swear that's how you do it. I've got to remember. Is it that we have to hit it with a force rod? I think we have to hit it with a force rod if that's not working. Yep, there you go. You get two bottle of enchantings. It doesn't matter what level book the actual is. Like if you put 30 levels into it pretty sure it's still the exact same. So then what you have to do next is you have to get another book. Not Bobapok book. 
simply get that. I'm going to get two, just because I have two. Chuck it in a book with a bottle of enchanting into your force infuser. Click go, and that's going to give you an experience tome. See, zero XP. Now, these are also useful. Go. These are also useful to put one into a chest next to your furnaces because as here, you know, it's got tons of experience. The experience you get from grinding things, cooking things, whatever, basically goes into this experience time. So you can use it for whatever you want. You know, you can, I think you can right click and you actually get the experience back. So it's a good way to basically farm experience, although it's not really farming. So what I need to do with this now is hold shift and right click. As you saw, my level bar went down. I clicked it 10 times and I got 100 experience in this. So every time you click it, it puts 10 experience in. Now what you want is multiples of 100. So I'm just going to click a whole bunch of times. Get to 300. Now once I've done that, I can grab my trusty little force rod again. Hit the book with it and you get upgrade cores. One for every 100 experience that's in it. Now the experience time will be destroyed, so that's why it might be a good idea to put a bunch of levels in it at one time so you don't have to repeat this process. So then what can you do with these upgrade cores? I may have some more, yep. So let's go through and think of the things that you can put on. You can put sugar on it to get speed. The maximum level is 5, I believe. You can put flint. To give you grinding, uh, you need something called a snow cookie for to actually get a freezing one. I'm just going to see if you can put more than one of these things on because I don't actually know. Uh, what else is there? Can I put heat on it? Does that work? If I grab a golden power source. I don't actually have any, so let me grab some force logs. Chuck them in the furnace. Let's just do that many. I think that was six. Yep, cool. There we go. And what I'm actually going to do is grab my little book of Medora, come over to the lovely upgrade cores tells you how to make it and it tells you all the valid things. So you've got speed, grinding, luck. Didn't know who'd get luck. Touch, heat, wing. How do you use wing for? Sturdy, damage, lumberjack, bane, bleed, rainbow, freezing, experience. Now it's important to note that you don't, not all those work in all machines. I think they can go in like uh, tools and whatever from Darkrass, special tools. So if we have a look, let's go through. I'm going to grab all the stuff needed to test all this, and we'll be back. All right, so now let's try this stuff out. So we can put an upgrade core in there. Yep, okay, so you can only put five sugar on it. So that is good to know. What I'm actually going to get is some force shards as well, just to chuck it in this thing. If you chuck four shards in here, if we have a look, okay, we've mastered this apparently. Is that the treasure core? We haven't mastered it. Maybe level 7 is the last one because you can't upgrade. So yeah, glowstone and treasure core, which is a pain in the ass to get if I remember correctly. So we have a core of speed 5. So I'm going to put 4 shards in here. What's good to know is they give you force, but they also give you, I think it's 100 or 10, I think it gives you 10 XP. So if you're a little bit short, on upgrading to the next tier of Darkcraft. Simply put some shards in and you'll get to 10 XP. So let's see, how much grinding can we put on? Just one. All right, so upgrade core and flint give you grinding. Ding. All right, upgrade core and snow cookie gives you freezing. Again, only one. I'm guessing most of them are going to be just one, except possibly the uh, core of speed. Then we have heat. Just one again. Again, no surprises there. There we go. Heat core. Rainbow core. 
which again, just one. Then we have a touch, again, just one. That's alright, I figured most of these are only going to actually allow one core of silk touch. We can put more than one bleed on. We can put three. Three arrows on an upgrade core and we get... Well, we'll see what we get. Like I said, most of these probably aren't going to uh, apply to our furnace. Only one lumberjack, that's okay. There we go, lumberjack core. Let's try our fortune. Oh, it looks like multiple fortunes work. Actually, no. Just a four. That's all right. It's going to take its time. Then we've got flight left. Like I said, most of these probably aren't going to go in the furnace. I mean, even I don't know what they go into. If we have a look in here. Doesn't seem to be anything. Valid upgrades for the shears. Okay, that's for the shears. That's fine. Um, not sure. I mean, they go on socketed power wrenches, but I think you have to actually have IC2 installed for that. I'm not 100% sure. All I know is the main ones you're using are speed grinding and probably frozen core. Alright, let's go flight. Just one of those. And that's pretty much it. Now we can finally get on to showing you how the force furnace actually works. Didn't expect it to take this long. So to put one of these upgrades in, you just grab it, left click in here. Now you can't actually get it out unless you destroy it by shift right clicking it. Now of course we know how this all works. It needs a power source. Again, I use a lava buckets just because it's great. And the good thing about this is it keeps its fuel. When it's not doing anything, it keeps its fuel level stored. It doesn't use any of it, unlike furnaces where if you put a piece of coal in, only cook one thing, you're stuffed. So that's one of the advantages to using these guys, as well as their many upgrades. So if we come over here, let's grab iron powder. Again, you know how this works. You know, it's just really fast. Probably go through a stack every 30 seconds, something like that. So to remove the core, we shift, right click. All right, so core of grinding, again, works pretty much just like you'd think. If we grab some iron, it's going to basically slowly grind this up because we can't have more than one core on a machine as far as I know. It's going to grind one piece of iron ore into two iron powder and as you saw something flung off, tin powder. So ores have a chance to give you other stuff as well. Not sure if it's a 100% chance or if it's a uh, random. But either way, put that in there as well. Alright, so let's get rid of that. Frozen core. Again, this is kind of something that you may use every now and then. Like I said, if we get never quartz, we chuck that in. That's going to freeze into Certus quartz. Now, there's a ton of different things you can do. I basically don't use it unless any eye tells me to, basically. Uh, unless there's a recipe I specifically need to use, I don't use it. Now, heat core. What does heat actually do? See, I'm not even sure myself what some of these do. Yeah, like I said, I don't think these are basically supposed to go on furnaces. Core of luck, maybe. No, that definitely doesn't go on. Nope. 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 Rainbow core does. What can we put like a piece of wool in and it gives us one of different colours? Is that how that works? No. Again, 
I'm not 100% sure what all the upgrades do. But that's a basic introduction to how... Uh, what is it? Darkcraft furnaces work. You can have more, uh, different upgrades to do different things. So, for whoever actually asked for that, there you go. I know that was a bit long, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that was actually quite a while. Whoopsies. But anyway, let's get through to the episode and actually get some challenges done. Let's see what we can actually do. Uh, we need to collect three more blaze wool. Three more blaze bonus to actually beat this challenge. I went and got another one, but uh, unfortunately that never fortress we were at is completely depleted now of uh, spawners. So I need to go and find another one. Could do a pigman gold farm, but I'm not 100% sure at this point how I want to do that. So dirt chest 9,000. All right, let's try and rush through some of these and get quite a few out of the way. Let's just search 9,000. That's a pretty simple recipe. How much dirt does this hold? Let's go downstairs. Huh? What the? Welcome to your new dirt chest 9,000. We hope you enjoy many happy years of storing your stack of dirt in our storage utility. Usage, simply insert the stack of dirt of your choice into the highly receptive slot and enjoy the great convenience of having that dirt available to you anytime you pass by this chest. Hope you've enjoyed reviewing this instruction manual and hope you'll consider using our products in the future. Kind regards, the Dirt Chest 9000 Manual Writers Incorporated. Right. This product has no warranty of any kind. Your dirt may not be stored, it may slowly leach in the environment, or alternatively, it may not do anything at all. Uh, Dirt Chest 9000 is kind to the environment. Please dispose of this guidebook responsibly. Okay. Into the void. <laughs> Alright, so does this just store one stack of dirt? If it does, I'm going to be... Holy Mongolia, I didn't mean to do that. I just... Whoopsies. Yeah. Wow, okay, so that's only one stack of dirt. Now I have to go through the manual process of putting all those back in. Okay, done. All right, so it just stores one stack of dirt. What a useless item. Oh, dear. All right, so that's that done. Making sure to hold shift. There we go. So that challenge is now done. Measure length of base with tape measure. Okay, that's pretty simple. Gonna need tape measure reel, which we don't have yellow. How do we make yellow? Surely I have, yeah, cool. Tape measure reel and tape measure. All right, let's do it. Let's measure the length of our base. So simply right click, it'll place that lovely thing and it will tell you how far away you are. It's very nice actually. It's a good thing if you're doing it for builds and that. So our base is 97 meters away. Oh, I need to watch my wing meter. <laughs> so 97 meters, we measured our base. Uh, okay, there we go. East to west, 97 blocks. Nice. So let's head back. Oop, I forgot about my rod of return. And let's measure the other direction, shall we? Just for completeness sake. Uh, I probably need to measure from up there, though. So, yoink. Making sure to not uh, run out my wing meter, because that's... Actually, it wouldn't be too bad, because we have the Rod of Return. So let's head down here. And measure how long the base is this way. There we go. 197 blocks. So, 97 and 197 blocks. So, that's a pretty big base. You know, it's not small by any means, but... Uh, oh, there goes the wing meter. Now I'm walking slow. 
Whoopsies. <laughs> All right, so that's that challenge done. That's another challenge. Hooray. So really getting through these challenges. All right, still not going to do the division sigil just yet. Uh, take a cookie from a cookie jar. Shall we do that then? Cookie jar. There we go. Let's make some cookies, shall we? A stack, why not? Don't know why I wanted to make a stack. Let's just put that right there. Spread it out. There we go. Lots of cookies. Taking a cookie, eating it. Although I'm not hungry, so... Yeah, that's that done. That's a nice little block, actually. Although the cookies aren't square there. They're not octagons, what are they? They're the six-sided things. Oh, God. I can't remember what that's called. Octagon. No, it's not an octagon. Octagon's eight. I know this isn't important, but I need to remember. Hexagon. No. Yeah, hexagon six. Yeah, I think that's right. Who got there. So yeah, that's another challenge done. Geez, some of these are really easy. Cookie from a cookie jar, gone. Wear a monocle. Well, why not? Whoo, looks fancy. Let's see if I remember how to get into this. No, not a screen, no. God, I can never remember the button. Here we go. Hello, sir. Good day to you. Ah. Yes, that's a monocle. <laughs> I'm not going to keep that on because I'd rather the dark craft stuff. So there we go. Uh, vintage jazz on an open blocks radio. Yeah, we are just grinding through all these. Lovely. Radio. Nice. Pop it right there. All right, uh, vintage. Is there like a? How do I do this? Radio. I got a bunch of these guys, but uh, it's not really open. Vintage jazz. Uh, I may have to mute the audio of this actually because I don't want copyright. You put that in. And it doesn't do anything. Maybe that one's broken. Okay. Redstone signal, maybe. Uh. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> so we know it works. It just needs a redstone signal. That's all right. I'm not going to play any of it because of... Uh, I don't know what's copyrighted and what's not. I'm assuming all of it. But, yeah. We need to get a vintage jazz thing. I'm pretty sure they actually come from loot bags. So we need to wait and get lucky enough to get a vintage jazz one. So... Hopefully that's not going to take too long. Uh, a assembler to autocraft 64k storage drives. Well, that's what I want to do soon. 10 heart can canisters we can't do without necrotic bones, I do believe. Yeah, we need necrotic bones and I don't have any of those. Need to go to the nether and fight some stuff. I don't think there's really anything else we can do pretty quickly. The rest kind of involves a bunch of stuff. Well, we could uh, get an, a wireless ME system. So we need a wireless access point. Probably going to need a few of these. I'm going to get four. 
because they have a limited range. I don't know what the range actually is, but... Oh, we need more cable. Oopsies. Nope. Want that, please. Two? Ah, oh, glass, are you kidding? That's alright, so uh, we have this lovely speed furnace. Which will give us glass quite nicely. There we go, that's the four we need. Okay, so these guys basically hook in to wherever your ME stuff is. So if I put one right there, that will work. Let's have one right there. Right there. Right there. Okay. That should be pretty fairly spread out. At least I hope. It should cover most of our base. Oh, looks like the drives are actually filling up. Don't know how they're filling up and what with. I suppose just all the essence, probably. Yeah, probably. We have tons of stuff. Not much status quartz, though. We need more of that. But uh, to do that off, we need the wireless access terminal. So I'm going to need to make an access terminal, which, of course, I don't have the stuff for. Oh, dear. This is why I can't wait to get the uh, assembler up. That's what I'll probably do next episode, is get the uh, assembler up and running. Not up and running, but get it all ready. So that we can start to automate things, which is going to be a godsend. It's going to be so good to finally be able to automate things. Alright, energy cell. Thank you. And one more of you guys. There we go. Now this won't work because it has no power. So I believe we just need to right click on... Oh no, we need to chuck it in there. Then that will fill up. At least it should. Right click this. I could swear that's how you do it. No, that links it. How do we get power then? Oh no, we need uh, something to charge things. It's mod dots. Thermal, there's a thermal expansion machine you can get to charge things up. Energetic infuser, that's it. Two of those guys. One of you and leadstone energy cell. Gonna need more of that glass for. And machine frame. I said machine frame. And that should be it. There we go, energetic infuser. Pop down. Uh, let's just chuck it right there. And then that will slowly power up, I hope. Uh, it's not getting any power at all. It should be. It's coming... Ah, uh, okay, yep. Because that's the uh, pink generator. I need to put some more pink wool on it. Because I haven't automated that yet. Oh no, it's the slabs I need to automate. That's right. Yeah, let's just chuck a bunch of slabs in. Oh dear, how long was it actually doing that for? I love it when my microphone decides to just lovingly move my voice over to one channel. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, 
yep, that's getting power. We just chuck that in. That will slowly charge up. And ta-da, we can access our ME system wirelessly. Of course, it doesn't work in uh, other dimensions. We need uh, those lovely wireless access points in order to actually use it. So we'll get later on to actually accessing it from another dimension using a singularity, which I haven't actually used before, but should be interesting nonetheless. Uh, where was the... I swear there was one. There we go. Access wirelessly. Nice. The rest is pretty much stuff that we cannot do at the moment without sort of pre-stuff. <laughs> uh, building a house and a trophy room. I'll probably do that off camera actually because no point watching me make a house. That's uh, no fun. But yeah. I'm going to need to go to the never... I'll need to actually figure out how I want to make this pigment gold farm because I've done pretty much two different types of mob traps. One with turtles, one with basically dropping them onto spikes. So, I'm trying to think creatively. Maybe we could use a grinder. I think that works on hostile mobs. Not sure. Hmm. Well, if you've got any suggestions for how to do a pigment farm that's interesting, let me know in the comments, and we'll see. Whew. So that's pretty much it, I reckon. We spent quite a while on actually getting dark craft furnaces explained and upgrade cords and whatnot. But, as usual, let's get a couple lucky blocks. How many droppers did I make? I made 64 droppers, so when we've run out of droppers, we know that we've done 64 lucky blocks. Alright. Ooh. What is that? Coloured glowstone. How interesting. Oop. And hey. Alright. Not so useful. <laughs> so... So far, lucky blocks. How many have we opened, actually? I opened 14. 14 good lucky... Well, 13 good lucky blocks, one bad one with the Enderman. But, you know, that wasn't too bad. So, we're not doing too bad, actually. No death yet. I say yet very cautiously because it's probably going to happen. And I'm going to open one at the end of the episode and it's going to be a Wither or Ender Dragon just to completely kill us. That's not fun. But anyway, that's the end of the episode. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.